Welcome back to the ECT curriculum. Today we're going to talk about ischemia, injury, and infarct. Please review this video prior to your next small group session. Before we delve into details, let's briefly go through the definitions of each of these ECG diagnoses. Ischemia is defined as ST depression or T wave inversion, injury by ST elevation, and infarct by pathologic Q waves. Remember from our first ECG basics session that regions of myocardium supplied by different coronary arteries are reflected by contiguous leads. For example, leads 1, AVL, V5, and V6 reflect the lateral myocardium, which is supplied by the left circumflex artery and the obtuse marginal arteries. Leads 2, 3, and AVF reflect the inferior myocardium, which is usually supplied by the right coronary artery. Leads V1 through V4 are the anterior leads, which are supplied by the left anterior descending artery. AVR can reflect problems in the left main coronary artery. Ischemia is defined by ST depression. Ischemia has a time-dependent effect on myocardial cells, lowering membrane potential and shortening action potential duration, thereby changing the voltage gradient between normal and ischemic tissue. Normally, repolarization results in an isoelectric ST segment with a positive T wave. When the coronary arteries which lie on the epicardium, such as this RCA, are stenosed by atherosclerosis, there is reduced blood flow to their supplied myocardial territory. This leads to subendocardial ischemia, as the subendocardium gets the least blood flow from this stenosed artery. The ST vector is thus shifted toward the subendocardium, leading to ST depressions in the leads overlying this territory. Alternatively, T wave inversions can be seen in affected regions. Ischemia is ST depression. Injury is manifest as ST elevation. When this overlying coronary artery is acutely blocked by a thrombosis, it leads to myocardial injury in its supplied region, transmurally. Injury is a disturbance in the myocardial cells from complete deprivation of oxygen. The cells are angry but alive and can be restored to normal with restoration of oxygen delivery. The ST vector is shifted outwards toward the epicardium, resulting in ST elevation in the leads overlying the affected myocardium. Presence of tall, hyperacute T waves can also be seen. The leads that lie in the opposite direction of the affected myocardium, such as a superior lead like AVL in this case, show an ST vector shift that is manifest as ST depression as a reciprocal change. A diagnosis of ST elevation MI requires one millimeter of ST elevation in two contiguous leads, except two millimeters of ST elevation in leads V2 to V3 for an anterior STEMI and ST depression in leads V1 through V3 for a posterior STEMI since the vectors are reversed in this area. To diagnose a posterior STEMI, leads V7 through V9 can be placed on the posterior thorax around the scapula to demonstrate ST elevations. However, if you see ST elevations everywhere, this implies a global injury, as in an inflammatory process like myopericarditis. Injury is manifest as ST elevation. Lastly, infarct is manifest as pathologic Q waves. The ECG changes for an infarct take hours to days to develop in response to the development of dead infarcted myocardium. In our blocked RCA, the tissue that was supplied by this area can no longer depolarize normally, leading to a Q wave, which is a negative deflection at the beginning of the QRS complex indicating that the vector of depolarization is unable to travel toward the overlying lead through that dead myocardium. A pathologic Q wave is defined as greater than or equal to 0 0.03 seconds and over 0.1 millivolts deep or QS complexes in leads 1, 2, AVL, or V4 through V6 in any two contiguous leads or 
a Q wave in leads V2 to V3 greater than or equal to 0 0.02 seconds or QS complexes in leads V2 and V3 or an R wave of greater than or equal to 0 0.04 seconds in leads V1 to V2 and an RS ratio of greater than or equal to 1 with a concordant W wave in the absence of conduction defects. Infarct is manifest as pathologic Q waves. In summary, today we talked about ischemia, ST depressions or T wave inversions, injury, ST elevations, and infarct Q waves. Remember that when you're looking for these changes, think about your myocardial distributions that correlate to the coronary arteries. Thank you for your time and have fun interpreting your ECGs.